yo, Spaghetto here, and welcome back to National Park Wyman. Now, today we're going to be continuing where we left off. We just woke up, so, uh, let's go. Also, how's everyone doing today? I, I, I just realized you pretty much just watch me make noises at anime girls for about 30 minutes to an hour in every video. And I'm not sure why you watch that, but you do. <laughs> so I appreciate it. A warm wetness slops against my cheek. Human breath sticks to my face. Oh yeah, we also hit 7,500 subscribers today. That's kind of amazing. I can't believe that. My eyes cross open and drift to the edge of my bed. It's a doggy! Oh, that's what I was hearing. I was like, what's sawing on my ears? What? With his front paws perched on the comforter, Pup continues breathing in my face. His wild tongue dangles below his jaw. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, be morning yet. He pushes himself off the bed and scampers away, sliding across the floor like it's an ice rink. Childish giggling fills the room, and now familiar sound of wings flapping like an overworked engine follows. Zion huffs and puffs her way around the corner. Pup runs behind her. I couldn't have slept for more than an hour. The nightstand clock seems to confirm this, as foggy memories of me glancing between it and the intruders tucked away in their sleeping bags come back to me. 3.30, 3.45, 4.20 blaze it, 5 o'clock, and finally 6.30. I feel like Goldilocks if she tried sleeping on the beds and the bears were hibernating in the corner, just testing her luck until she eventually gets mauled. I peel myself out of the bed and draw shut the curtain that divides the room. When I'm done changing into my uniform, I slip back... I slip back out and catch a whiff of something delicious. Good morning, Miss Eve. Aw, she's so perfect. Can we just keep her, please? You know, Zion is probably uh, millions of years old, so does that mean she's legal? Hmm. Oh, wait, FBI, I'm sorry. I already wish I was back in bed. Rise and shine, Eve who works here. Catch all your Zs. Ugh. I was having a good morning until I saw your face. Why do I hate Yellowstone so much? I don't know why, I just don't like her. Yellowstone peeks out from the kitchen, whisking a bowl in steady circles. Once again, a kettle rests on her head. Uh, they must have slipped through my fingers. Or out of your mouth. When you aren't shifting around, you sound like a broken trombone. Well, geez, Yosemite. I'm sorry. I glare over at the table, Yosemite is chin deep in a book and sifting through the pages. Papers litter the table, some sprawled out like a shuffled deck of cards, others stacked into leaning towers. The cardboard box sits right in the middle, acting as an eye to the storm. Without taking her eyes off the book, she raises a coffee mug into the air. Yellowstone, tea. Jeez, Yosemite, <laughs> come on my slaves, get me tea faster. Just a jiff. Yellowstone power, power walks over, glancing the bowl, balancing the bowl in her arm. She tips her head and pours the water from the kettle to the cup. The process is delicate, like a ballerina bending into shape of a swan. Nonetheless, through the teetering and tottering, the kettle stays balanced on top of her cone head. Want me to replace the bag? It's pretty much water now. Don't be wasteful. There's still some flavor left. Fine, fine. Yellowstone gives a defeated sigh, the same one I give every time I have to tell someone, yes, you need a permit to fish. How about you, Eve? I saw you chugging coffee last night. Bet you take a black, huh? You seem like the type of kid who takes a black. I like my uh, girls how I like my coffee. Sweet. Yeah, I like my coffee sweet. There's a pause as I try to get a handle on this stitched together combination of English and slang. A Frankenstein of language. With a little sugar, actually. Dang, thought I had it. She snaps her fingers as she returns to the kitchen. Oh well. Hop a squat. I'll get you a cup. Thanks, Yellowstone. Very cool. Squat a... a what? She means sit down. <laughs> so I just... Meow. <laughs> She's like a little airplane just flying around the cabin. No can do. I have my job to take care of. Patrolling, permits, calls. Tattling on us. 
<laughs> Shut up, Yosemite. You're the one that's in a cabin unannounced. Her eyebrows bounce up as she takes a sip of her tea. <laughs> Sips tea, that's none of my business. Priority number one, I assure you. I give her a phony smile that lapses into an eye roll. I hope she sees it. She's right, though. It completely slipped my mind. I guess when it became clear that they probably weren't going to kill me, my mind started drifting to more abstract questions. You can do all that later. Just breathe in that fresh morning air for now. I'm making flapjacks. A voice crack. I'm making flapjacks. <laughs> Yay. Wow. Even Yellowstone's making Zion depressed. How could you? Except her quiet tear doesn't match her solemn face. Don't worry, cutie. I'm making you a veggie omelet. That sounds good. Zion's downridden face lights up, hopeful but cautious. Will you use the mushrooms I picked the other day? I freaking love mushrooms. Okay, they're the best. I can if you go get them for me. With an excited nod, Zion shuffles off to the closet. Where Zion goes, Pup follows. And the bird does too. Remember to wash them! Yosemite calls out, but neither answer. Zion digs around in the closet, and Yellowstone hums to herself, out of tune and off key. Fine. Don't cry to me when your stomach starts growing fungus. I love the music in this game. It's just so nice to listen to. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy the soundtrack. I think I'm gonna buy the soundtrack. The frying pan sizzles in the background as everyone goes about their morning, swept up in their routines, while I'm swept to the side, with not a whole lot else to do, except fear for my life. And let's be honest, there's not a whole lot left to fear for anyway. I grab my notebook and I sit at the table. Since it's round, I have no choice but to face Yosemite. If it bothers her as much as it bothers me, then she doesn't show it. She grabs a blank paper from a wobbling stack and starts scribbling on it, constantly referring back to her book. Sharing a meal with a person, or thing, that tried to run me out of my post doesn't exactly thrill me, having to stare at them the entire time, even less so. Still, I make an attempt to clear my mind and start jotting down the events from last night, but my uniform is tight and restrictive and squeezes around my joints like a python. My writing is similarly uncomfortable and stiff, <laughs> reading more like a report to Jesse than a deep, emotional expression to Teddy. Not that there's much of that left in me anyway. As the assailant exited the closet, the perpetrator wrestled the gun from me. These are just a few examples. It's accurate, coherent enough to get the information across, definitely, but dry enough to be vague and frustrating. I experienced it, and I even hardly know what happened. Hell, I hardly know what they are. They aren't ghosts, and I'm an idiot for buying that, even for as briefly as I did, but they aren't quite human either, although after their ears and wings and volcano heads, they may as well be people. Some sugar or sugar. <laughs> Yellowstone, stop it. Yellowstone sets down a cup of coffee in front of me. The trail of grainy sugar starts swirling around in it. Yellowstone, stop complimenting me. I'm out of your league, okay? There's an explosive pop from the kitchen. Smoke plumes above the frying pan. No! My flapjacks! Are you having a science experiment in there? Did you just blow up a child? She rushes over like an overworked a waitress at a diner and lowers the heat. And me? I feel like a traveler exploring the cosmos. I found an alien society and everything they do is fascinating in how mundane it is. It's not polite to stare. If we freak you out that much, you can turn around. Or leave. That would work, too. I'm not the one that has words that are as sharp as your pointy ears, Yosemite. So be quiet. You'd like that, huh? For me to leave you alone so you can just keep mooching off this place? Yeah, that's right. Are you expecting a no? All the other goons always ran off to the outpost down the road as soon as they caught wind of us. Only ever came back if they had to get something. And never alone. Any of that sympathy from last night has evaporated with the steam from her tea. All that's left is her condescending smirk. It drives me nuts. Well, I'm not like the others. Thank God. It doesn't take much to scare the apathy into them. But not you, huh? I'm open to suggestions. 
I throw back the coffee like it's the nastiest double shot in this side of the happy hour. The scalding liquid funnels down my throat, then I surrender to my journal. Yosemite watches me with a focused squint. What's that? Official report to the head goon? No, it's my diary, and nobody's allowed to read it, okay? It's personal. The lead at the tip of my pencil snaps under the force, leaving a skid mark streaking across the page. Journal. Sorry to disappoint. Oh gosh, you better not be reading my journal, Yosemite. Her ears twitch at the mention of journal. What kind of journal? For documenting information? Studies? I think Yosemite likes the fact that we journal. Hmm. Just a journal. I use it to wring out the last few drips of dams I give. Keeps me anchored to reality. I look up at her, tracing my way back from her roots with her, to her blue hair down to the frosted white tips. Her hair looks like a waterfall pouring over a cliff. And boy oh boy, do I need that. She deflates as if I'm the one res responsible for sucking out all the wonder and curiosity in this world. Suppose I should be proud of you, though. I keep writing. Don't bother looking up. After all, how many of you suits actually know how to write? Gosh dang it, I can't, I can't help myself. You think we're dumb? I think you're uneducated. Wow! <laughs> I think you're pompous. Look, I'm not wild about my co-workers either. Glad we're in agreement. Agreed. But, give us some credit. Or at least give me credit. You know what a school is, right? Something I assume you didn't go to? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is hilarious, though. <laughs> no. For me, school was years worth of crap I had to sludge through to even get a sniff. And was it worth it? The question like a splash of cold water to the face, it forced me to decide on whether I want to give an easy answer or the answer that lurks in the back of my heart. Popular opinion is a giant no. It might be if people cared, but they don't. And even if I thought it was, if those people are the ones I'm protecting this land for, nothing will ever make it worth it. Yosemite yawns, her face slumped against her cheek in boredom. She returns to her book. Wow. I was almost expecting something insightful. Don't like the answers? Don't ask the questions. Yeah, that's right, Yosemite. It's not the answers that bother me. It's the rotten little mind behind them. You know what, you frosted tip edgelord? I didn't ask you to invade my cabin. <laughs> Lightning cracks between us. We glare at each other in silence. My eyes will roll out of my head before I blink. You two can duke it out after breakfast. Time to chow down. After breakfast. Time to chow down. <laughs> Yellowstone. <laughs> uh. Yellowstone swoops in with two platters of fluffy stacked pancakes. A thin slice of butter slides across both of them, melting down the sides and mixing with the syrup. I poke at the pancakes with my fork. Is it poison? It seems safe. In fact, it looks delicious. Like a picture ripped straight out of a menu before you get the real soggy thing. Cutting a pie-shaped sliver off, I dip, I dip it into the shallow pool of syrup that's accumulated at the sides of the plate. Eh, why not? If it's poison, at least it's gonna taste amazing. <laughs> ah, I love Eve. I take the plunge. Warm sugar dri drizzles down my tongue. The rich butter oozes out of the pancakes that you oozes. There's a hint of crispiness from the slightly charred rings around the sides of the cake. Balancing out the taste of the sugar, it practically dissolves in my mouth. I swallow. Holy crap. That's that's not a swear. Okay. A moan slips out of me almost again. <laughs> These pancakes are so good. <laughs> almost a gasp. It would be embarrassing if this weren't so shocking or delicious. Oh my gosh. Yellowstone giggles. <laughs> like it? Unable to resist, I dive in for the next piece. I nod as I talk through the food. Yeah, it's sort of amazing. Uh, how did you even... 
I know how to make Eve smile. You just gotta feed her. Oh man, that's that's the, that's the trick with Eve. You just gotta feed her. Okay, that's that's perfect. I'm basically the chef around here. She beams with a proud smile. And the maid, and the dishwasher, and the laundry. Er. Okay, I, Yellowstone's growing on me just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> you could say that I'm a jack of all trades, master of them too. I'll say. What did you even put in this? A <laughs> trade secret. Drugs. She put drugs in it. Yosemite flips to the next page. It's brown butter. No fear! Well, that was rude, Yosemite. What the frick? A dark cloud of steam trails out from the opening of her head. I think I smell sulfur. Well, whatever it is, it's delicious. I wash down the shock with coffee. Thanks. Yellowstone eyes grow to be the largest platters the pancakes are on. You really mean that? Thanks? Does nobody ever say thank you to Yellowstone? Would she prefer I tell her to screw off? Uh, yeah. I was just planning on living off canned sausages while I was here. Tears creep out of the corner of her eyes and whimper, then a geyser of water erupts from her head. Whoa. Why is your head peeing? Stop! Stop! You're making a mess! Oh, Smoke. I didn't think being complimented would feel so good. You're a good gal, huh? It was just a thank you. It's okay, Yellowstone. Don't cry. The water umbrella's over her as she moves in for a one-armed hug. Not overly fond of hugs or getting my uniform soaked with tears before work or touching... I scoot away in my chair. Ah, that gives me an idea! She bounces back like a spring. The whiplash gives me a concussion. What if, and stay with me here, instead of us leaving, or you leaving, or anyone leaving, what if we just live together? Roommates! You know, as long as Yosemite isn't so annoying all the time with her condescending remarks, I'm okay with that. And Zion's perfect, okay? She could stay. And that dog, too. Absolutely not! You're acting like you own the cabin, Yosemite. Like last night? But every night. Just give it a think. We already have a solid setup here. We could keep the place nice and tidy while you're wage slaving away all day. I'm too stunned to outright decline with any kind of resolve. Shamelessly, shameless naivety. The kind, <laughs> the kind tied with the bow and given to you. Is impossible to answer with harsh realism. It's genuine and it's familiar. And if the food will always be this good, maybe the idea isn't. Also, it's like having three wives at your house all the time. Woohoo! Zion is the one that's wholesome and perfect all the time. Yellowstone is the upbeat one that's kind of weird with her slang but makes amazing food. And then Yosemite is the one that gives you condescending remarks. Like a whammon. <laughs> isn't what? Eve isn't going to happen. Because that's the only thing it is. Remember why you're here. Look outside. Look at the land you love. And look at the scavengers that stomp over it. Now remember why you're here. I'm only here because it's my job. Last I checked, woodland sprites aren't on the payroll. The pancakes were good, but I'm still radioing this in. Yellowstone's excitement is snuffed out like a candle. Aww, I thought it was a pretty good idea. Please don't cry again. Oh my gosh, please don't. Yosemite heaves a small sigh of relief. <sighs> Stop scaring me like that. I've had more than enough of Miss Misery. Are you referring to yourself? Before I can bite back, Zion scampers up to Yellowstone with a cutting board. And the blue bird from earlier picks up the picks at the dried mushrooms that line the board. Can we just appreciate this little angel right here? Literally, this little angel. Okay. Anyways. Does that mean we'll have to find a new home? <laughs> My heart. Let him stay, Eve. Please. I can't say no to that face. I could say. I could definitely say no to Yosemite. Maybe even Yellowstone, but not Zion. That, that just breaks my heart. 
She stares at the mushroom. She stares down at the mushrooms dejectedly, but Yellowstone reassures her with a smile. Don't worry. Yosemite knows a lot of neato places to hide. We can just trust her to take care of us like always. We'll be back soon. She won't last long. She leans into the table and locks eyes with me. It's the eyes. They're almost as dull and lifeless as the others. I don't give her an inch, remaining flat and unblinking. Your flapjacks are gonna get dull and lifeless if you don't eat them soon. Yellowstone shuts Yosemite's book and scoots the platter forward. Like a sponge, the pancakes have absorbed most of the butter and syrup. With a futile gasp, a grasp, Yosemite stretches for the book, but it's just out of reach. She sulks and then stabs the pancakes with a fork. I was reading that? Now I'll have to find my place again. Wow! Yosemite is just like Yuri, except um, she's not as shy and, and she's more condescending and <laughs> pompous. Too smart for a bookmark? Hmm. <laughs> Smarter than you. We both take a bite out of our pancakes. Between chewing, I give her the fakest, most plastic grin I can manage, forcing the dimples until it hurts. She doesn't. <laughs> she does it right back. It's like staring into a twisted funhouse mirror. It ain't a big dealio. Your brainiac butt has read all those books at least 50 times by now. It is a big deal. You'd be surprised by how much you don't pick up on the first time around. Her gaze drifts off over to Zion, who is now crouched down with Pump, letting him sniff the mushrooms. A touch of sadness flashes through her eyes, and for the first time I notice the bags under them. Or... How much you forget. Too bad Eve isn't sticking around long enough for us to use her credit card. You could have ordered tons more books. And groceries. More fresh veggies, please. Oh, man. My heart. Someone get Zion to a produce stand right now. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yosemite sips her tea and shrugs. Just be happy you goons are useful for something. They usually cancel the card after the first couple charges. <laughs> I try to choke back a chuckle, but it comes out as a snort. This probably isn't the kind of stuff I should condone, but the image of someone like Ernie opening their monthly statement, seeing an unexpected charge of $600 brings me more joy than it possibly probably could. And honestly, screw Ernie. Tugging at Yellowstone's jacket, Zion raises the cutting board up as a reminder. Um, I'm gonna croak from hunger. Yosemite winces at croak. Please stop teaching her your second language. But Yellowstone ignores her, and she bends down and takes the board, her expression melting into one of the complete adoration as she gushes over Zion. Sorry, sorry. Do you want spinach on it, too? Mm-hmm. Don't cook it with butter, though. Too much MSG. Zion sounds just like me. <laughs> Is Zion a vegetarian, too? That would totally make sense because of, like, her plant-like, uh, look around her. Uh. Huh? Are you sure? I want you to have enough energy to go hiking with me later. I don't think so. After you're done here, there's a whole lot of cleaning up you have to do. Give me a break! I just swept the other day. <laughs> Give me a break! I just cleaned, like, last week. And now the kitchen is a disaster zone. Clean. Before we leave. Okay, Mother Yosemite, I appreciate that, because a dirty kitchen is the most irritating thing. Grumbling to herself, Yellowstone slouches, slouches back into the chair. Maybe in, into the kitchen. Dirty so quick that they actually ruins traditions. <laughs> what was that? Uh, nothing, Chief. Chief just called. This is it. Yosemite returns to her book, occasionally picking out her pancakes. When she's positive Yosemite isn't looking, Yellowstone pokes her tongue out at her. It's weird. I wouldn't expect some kind of hierarchy to exist among them. But Conehead and the Pixie seem to revere her like a big sister. All that's missing is her flipping through the Nature magazine while hogging the phone. Girls still do that, right? Must be pretty gripping if you can't tear yourself away from it for more than five seconds. 
It's not. Just some accounts from a miner that passed through these parts a long time ago. But it helps. With your research? Her brow furrows, and she gives me a side-eyed glance. Want to tell me how you know that? You have a folder that literally has research written on it. Wasn't hard to put two and two together. Look, it does math. I swear, if you call me it one more time, I'm going to take my fist and shove it up your nostril. It does facial reconstruction, too. She pinches her eyes shut with a groan. I knew your snooping would be an issue. And I knew you living here would be an issue, so now we're even. Don't get your yoga pants in a bunch. I didn't actually see anything. Stuffed from the pancakes, I lean back in the chair and melt. I don't know how much butter and sugar she put in those things, but my uniform feels like a button might pop off. Gotta say, though, I'm curious what someone like you could be researching. Yosemite pushes up against the table. A gleam of excitement colors her face. You're curious? Yes, that's why I asked the question. Excitement clouds into suspicion. Why? <laughs> uh. Just Stam? Being so close, I get a good look at her defined, pointed face. No loose skin, no flap, not even a puffy baby fat around her cheeks. Can I get some personal space here? I don't want to catch your personality. Dang it, if I squint hard enough, she's actually kind of cute. <laughs> She pulls herself away and goes silent. My curiosity is waning. Shut up. No, you. Biting the bottom of her lips, she glances back and forth. She sighs and then closes her book. <sighs> you see Yellowstone's head? Her voice droops to a hoarse whisper as she leans in. I do the same. How could I not? What does it look like to you? Uh... An almond? What does this have to do with any- Just tell me what it looks like. A volcano. A volcano? It looks like a volcano. And can you guess what has a volcano? Yellowstone National Park, obviously. But volcanoes don't actually look like that. You're not going to get anywhere with that kind of linear thinking. She moves on. And look at Zion. I do. She hovers in the air, keeping the omelet out of Pup's reach. Leaves float off her like Auden. No, this isn't coyote food. It's not good for you. See those leaves and branches? Pretty lush, right? Sure. Remind you of any particular painting. She points her thumb at the wall. I glance back and admire the painting of Zion National Park, with its deep greens and mix of fiery reds and beiges. Wait, are you saying... Starting to get it? My mind skates uh, to the obvious. Yeah, the three of you like playing dress-up. Real cute. <laughs> it's amazing how you keep finding new ways to disappoint me. Let's try this again. I ignore the snark dribbling out of her mouth. After all, disappointing people is second nature at this point. Myself, particularly. Yosemite scoots against the table. She points at her face, specifically the freckles dotted across it. Are you giving me permission to slap you? Yes! Please do! I'm giving you permission to learn. Now touch it. Are you giving me permission to touch you? I should have rephrased that. <laughs> Closing her eyes, she sticks out her chin and waits, like someone expecting a kiss. I start to reach out my hand, but in an overabundance of caution keeps me from going any further. What if this is some kind of trick? She tried to scare me away, didn't she? What's stopping her from biting off my finger? Wouldn't be the first time someone has tried that while I was on the clock. I shudder as I remember the man's blistering, uh, bloodshot eyes. He had been delirious, caked in spine needles and mud, with tattered clothes, no telling what he was hyped up on. After Jesse made sure I was okay, she shrugged. It takes all... <laughs> It takes all kinds, she said. Yosemite's nose wiggles impatiently. I decide she's probably harmless, and waking up alive is a good evidence for that. 
Even if we've only t tossed verbal punches at each other, she was the one who offered a truce. So that has to mean something. I can't shake the suspicion completely, but I do reach out and brush my hand over her cheek. A gravelly and rugged texture scratches across my fingertips where her freckles should be. It finally clicks with me. These aren't freckles at all. They're more like scales or pebbles glued to her face. I just, just to make sure, I sweep my hand up and down her face between the patches of pebbles, and her soft skin glows a flushed pink. I said to touch it, not to caress it. Jeez. <laughs> I grip one of the pebbles between my fingers and tug on it. Instead of ripping off, Yosemite's skin is stretched right behind it. Ah! Are you just trying to rip her face off? <laughs> she pulls away, hints of tears glisten at the corner of her eyes. You didn't have to be so rough. I'm sorry. Some people like it rough. I mean, what? My mouth hangs open as the confusion bounces around like a tumbleweed in my head. Is that rock? Well, it sure isn't costume jewelry. Whining, she soothes her. She soothes. Ah, soothes. Ah, I can't print. I know how to say this word. I just can't pronounce. Ah, I can't English. She soothes her pulsing cheek. There we go. Sorry. I don't know why that took me so long. I twist around and look at the top painting at, in the pyramid. Lumbert Dome. I saw glimpses of it uh, on the drive here. If I stepped outside, I could see it now. And every time I've ever climbed up there, it's been gravelly, and it's been rugged. Most mountains in Yosemite and Valley are. I think back to Yellowstone's explanation from last night. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's basically fantasy. But if there's any other explanation, then it, then I can't think of it. Your... Your Yosemite National Park. Dear God, did I actually say that out loud? Am I going crazy? Is that what's happening? But Yosemite gives a satisfied nod, and I'm convinced that I've taken a one-way trip on the crazy train. I'm riding a locomotive off cliff. Emphasis on the loco. Now you're starting to get it. Fine. Oh, whoops. I try to choke out more words, more questions, but they dissolve into breathy stutter. Breathy stutters. Yosemite looks on with an amused smirk. Far away laughter and chatter breaks through the confused silence. From outside, I hear the snapping and crunching of twigs and leaves. The voices get louder, passing the cabin, and, and then tap her off. Just, what are you? What are you, really? Yosemite smirk fades into a frown, and her eyes scan the mess of books and paper and then stay there. Her hands grip the table, and her nails dig into the wood. You don't know? I hardly believe the genuine shock in my voice. I'm not actually buying this garbage, am I? That's the winning question, isn't it? She slinks back in her chair, breaking her razor of straight posture. She sighs, drawing in a deep breath, but releasing it as a quick puff. Her frown relaxes into a smile, and a soft smile, and the kind people have when they're nostalgic, or thinking about a family member that isn't around anymore. So I have a theory. Yes, they are the parks, but what if the parks have like a forest fire or something that like devastates the actual location of the park? Does that mean that Yosemite, Zion, or Yellowstone will die? Like, what if someone has a fire in Yellowstone Park and burns down half of it? Does that mean it's gonna like affect Yellowstone physically too? And if that's the case, that would be really interesting. And if one of the characters died that way, I'm, I would be like, oh man, that's kind of sad. Just like, you're holding, like Eve's holding Yellowstone as she's dying, but she can't do anything to save her because there's an actual forest fire happening that she can't put out. That would be really intriguing to me. Do we not know? Or do we just not remember? I can do without the cryptic crap. It's anything but. I'm telling you what I know. And what I know is that I'm Yosemite. Just like they know how they're Zion and Yellowstone. Okay, sure. But how do you know? How do you know that your stomach rumbles when you are hungry? Did someone have to explain the concept to you? How long have you known? I don't know. Have you always known? I don't know. Do you know anything? If I knew anything, I wouldn't be trying to figure it out. 
She shoots up out of her chair and then glares down at me. Her voice cuts through the air like a dagger. Her little outburst throws the room into silence. Yellowstone coughs from the kitchen. Pup's tail spikes up and alert. I stare back, pretending to be unfazed, but secretly, I'm tense. My muscles flex against my uniform. In the thick of the silence, Zion tiptoes over to the table and she latches onto Yosemite's hand, her own tiny hand, only managing to wrap around three fingers. Wordlessly, she gazes up at her, <laughs> at her with deep, pleading eyes. Yosemite's sharp face softens back into that solemn smile, and her hand engulfs all of Zion. She strokes her palm and fiddles with her fingers. Zion gives a ticklish giggle. I have these fragments that pop into my head. Bits and pieces of a language I don't know. Faces I don't recognize, but seem familiar. Her voice shakes, hovering above a whisper, breaking at the end of the words. And whenever I think I've figured it out, and it's on the tip of my tongue, I forget. She shuts her eyes tight, as if trying to envision these things herself. Her grip around Zion's hand tightens, but Zion doesn't pull away or even wince. So, do their memories just continuously fade away? That's an interesting concept, because what if she, like, had someone she cared about prior, and then she just totally forgot them? They're like echoes that ripple further away with each new epiphany. It just gets quieter and quieter. It's so frustrating! The words strain out of her, or strain out of her through gritted teeth. But... If I can figure out just what we are, where we came from, then maybe, maybe I can finally remember. She opens her eyes, and they look older. It feels like she's staring right through me and gazing at the paintings hung on the wall. Like I'm just another obstacle getting in her way. So yeah, I don't know anything, but I'm going to. Well, good for you. Oh, come on, Eve. The way she's always staring at me is unsettling. Is it simmering anger? Reluctant curiosity? I don't know. And if I knew what was good for me, I wouldn't care. I whistle for Pup. He bounces over, and in a moment of impossible patience, sits at my feet. He looks up at me, his sad brown eyes connecting with mine as he licks his chops. <sighs> now there's a, stare I, there's a stare I can care about. I tear off a piece of my leftover pancake and toss it to him. Springing from his legs, he leaps up in the air and snatches it. It bounces off his nose, and instead of <laughs> any amazing acrobatic display, he twirls in circles until he finds it on the ground. Bravo. Across the table, Zion stares, pouting. It's just a treat. It's not going to kill him. The group of voices from earlier echo back from outside, rowdier and louder than before. They're always... There are ways away, but I can still pick up on the occasional gracious curse and obnoxious laugh. Drunk already, kids? Of course, who am I to judge? A couple more months of this job and I'll be investigating, uh, investing in a flask to give my morning coffee a little extra kick it needs. Ranger Smith may actually end up being my life model. Praise be to the Smith. Yosemite eyes the window. Friends of yours? No. God, no. I scoff, but it comes off sounding more like a hiss. A day on the job where I don't have to deal with those hellspawn tracking their carbon footprint in here is a day well spent. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> uh, she chuckles to herself. It reminds me of how snide some, some of my college professors were. Their latte in their hand and their head up their backside. She swipes away a strand of sweat that drips down her cheek. And what, pray tell, did you think this time? That I was wrong about you. I devote myself to Pup, picking, up more piece, picking off more pieces of the pancake to give to him, whatever I can do to make it look like I'm not paying attention to her, but always making sure I keep her within the corner of my eye. Last night, I could have sworn I saw some conflict swimming around in those dead eyes of yours. Sniffling in the corner, crying about just how tired you were. Unzipping her jacket all the way, she starts to fan herself, but at the slight breeze it doesn't cool down my simmering blood, 
It's like she's trying to roast me until I burn. What gives her the right to pry? To poke at me until I spill my guts. I'm not here to be judged. The only conflict last night was you three. Of course I'd be tired. Why do you care? Because I'm tired too. Tired of you people prioritizing that ranger image so people don't realize you're actually hired thugs. You're just one branch on a tree that doesn't even care about you. A bureaucratic arm I'd rather see cut off than fester. You're not here to educate. You're not here to preserve. Not unless preservation looks like a permit. No. You're here to protect the bottom line. To shake people down when they just want to get away from the hell you've created. To make sure there's enough resources intact to vacuum money up when your masters come calling. I've seen your type before. You don't care. Putting on that dumb hat just makes you think you do. You're wrong. I was different. I actually did care. Right? There was never any glory in this. Just the slow descent into misery. Unless, that's where the glory is at. Pride for being a glorified security guard that doubles as a janitor, cleaning up the messes of only people lower on the totem pole than me. Because the only thing that separates them from me is what? Me caring enough to be miserable, miserable for it? But of course, if I'm miserable, then that means... You're right. Maybe I don't. I bend over and I pat Pup's head. His, he paws at my leg for more, but I stand up. Maybe caring got too hard. Maybe it wasn't worth the pain it caused. I take several steps, stopping at her chair. There is one thing I care about, though. Sweat runs down Yosemite's cheeks and streams. She pants heavy breasts, her chest weight heaving in and out. Getting you the hell out of here. I'm radioing this in. That's right, Eve. Do what you have to do. What you should have done all along. I start for the fossilized radio on the desk, but Yosemite shoots out of her chair. Zion cowers back. Go ahead. Do it. Prove to me you're just another... Just another... Fra... Does she just die? Her voice dissolves into a breathy air. There's a solid thump. When I turn around, she's sprawled out on the floor. Yosemite! Before I can even connect the dots, Zion and Yellowstone are already at her side, on their knees. Yellowstone grabs a stack of paper from the table and fans her. Zion squeezes her hand. I race back over and bend a knee. Heat radiates from her like an oven, and I press my hand against her forehead. As soon as I touch her skin, my hand burns, and I yelp and pull away. I feel like I just touched a skillet and the burn seared through the layer of skin. A fever? Zion shakes her head. A fire. Yosemite opens her eyes, glossy and unfocused. Her breath pumps in and out as she fights to get up. I called it! I called it! I said, what if there's like a fire and one of them just falls over and is hurt and it affects them physically? I knew it! Alright. I'm gonna call this episode here, so thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of this video and let me know if you'd like to see more. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Stay safe.